credit in the world. I, I thought they played uh, terrific uh, offense and defense. And this uh, young guy right here, Milling, uh, when he got the ball near the near the 10, he was able to put it away. Uh, good effort by Kyle Milling and Kenya Wilkins, of course. Uh, no surprise that uh, he had a good first half. He really has it against everybody in there. Just an outstanding move right down the middle and able to get it over the uh, outstretched half, uh, hands of Kareem Stanley. The Defensively, the Bulldogs did have some uh, some good moments. Yeah, they did. They had four shot blocks, and here's one of them. Stanley was able to get uh, Mike Carson's uh, uh, errant attempt that time, and then uh, Forney here able to knock this one out of bounds. So pr pretty good defensive effort inside uh, by uh, Fresno State. Here was a good effort. It, it was a double team by the Oregon Ducks, and uh, that time good effort by Heron to get it inside to uh, Damon Forney, who had an outstanding first half. Uh, and fence, in fact, the fence play of Fresno State was terrific. They didn't get much out of their starters, but the guys that came off the bench really kept them in the game. Forney, uh, far and away, the high point for Fresno State in this one, hitting four out of five shots, uh, leading away with nine points. Dominic Young, one of six from the field, down a three-pointer and just three points. Kendrick Brooks also was just three points. And you see balance scoring by Oregon. Wilkins, Curry, Lawrence, eight apiece. Milling doing some damage inside. Our Pacific Bells, Mark Yellow Pages halftime stats. Just two free throws for the Bulldogs, a team that averages 30 a game. Well, that tells you you're not getting the ball inside, and, and you're not getting the benefit of many calls either. And look at the turnovers, nine turnovers, and only four by the Oregon Ducks. So obviously, Kenya Wilkins and his guys are taking care of the ball. A lot of work left for the Bulldogs to do. 20 minutes of basketball remaining to get it done. We'll be back with the second half after this. want a new sports car this Christmas under the tree but at the men's warehouse we've got gifts that will fit under the tree for less than 50 bucks I guarantee it the men's warehouse in Fresno by Celia and Bakersfield it's easy for any agency to advertise its list of services we'd rather explain them to you personally after all your insurance is a very personal thing to you and to us Reinhardt's the name means insurance Welcome back to Eugene, Fresno State, facing a nine-point deficit as we get ready for the second half of play. Three guards for Jerry Tarkanian, Young, Heron, and Brooks, just two out of ten from the field in the first half. So Tark's got to try and work things out there, get this team to execute offensively. And don't forget, though, that the two out of ten that you referred to was the first two shots that were taken. Both went in by threes by Kendrick Brooks and Dominic Young, and then 0 for 8 for the remainder of the 18 minutes of the first half. So, Jerry, you know, I'm sure he had a very spirited talk with his team, and, and we said this at the top of the show, Ralph. How would the dogs react? First time on the road, a lot of new players, uh, definitely a very a hostile crowd, and uh, certainly... Uh, uh, Jerry's been through this before, obviously, many times, and uh, I'm sure he's got his team ready to go. So th this is a bit of a gut check, I think, in the early season for Fresno State. How will they come out and play? Will they execute? And can they get back in this game? Very important to get a quick start. 40 starts the second half, and it's a good start for the Bulldogs. He's now 5 out of 6 from the field, 11 points, leading all scores. Yeah, interesting that... Uh, that the, the coaching staff decided to, to really play the guys in the front line that were productive in the first half, and that's Roberson and Forney, and they get the start. Miller, oh, blocked by Forney. Controlled by Young. Well, you just can't take anything weak at all in there. I mean, <laughs> Forney's a big-time leaper. Roberson, reverse. No good. Rebound Raymaker. Have to stop the ball here and put some pressure on Curry. Drives around Brooks, puts that one up. Whistle on the play. Foul will be called on Fresno State. Yeah, this, 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 this is a nice job by Curry. You see him with the pump fake and try to go under control, and, and he knows that when he takes the ball up near the 10, he, he better bring it in real strong because there's some high flyers coming at him, and that time uh, Forney may have picked up the foul on that particular drive. Curry shooting, two makes the first. 
Uh, Jerry Green has really done a nice job here at Oregon. His team's, uh, as I said, made it to the tournament a couple of years ago, first time in 34 years, and 16 wins last year, and now he feels this is a club that could be very competitive in the Pac-10 Conference. They have an illegal strain away from the ball. And you have to be set when you're setting those screens. It might be on Roberson. It is on Roberson. Second on him. Second team foul on Fresno State. Those are momentum breakers, Ralph. You, know, you come out and you score the first basket, and you want to come down and run your offense, and you pick up a, a moving screen, and it, and it just kind of stops you in your tracks. And now you have to regroup yourself and hope you can defend. Raymaker inside. I think Tony blocked another one he did. Raymaker got it back. And over Tony that time. David Forney with a great effort, but Raymaker st stayed with it. An 11 point lead now for the Ducks. Young looking inside, turns it over. Wilkins to Lawrence. Two. Now that was all Kenya Wilkins. When he had that deflection, he just went length of the floor and made a beautiful bounce pass, and he's a guy you have to control in the open court. Kenny Wilkins is really winning the battle so far against Dominic Young. Ten apiece for Wilkins and Curry. Three-point attempt, no good by Brooks. Roberson tried to save it at the baseline. It would be out of bounds Oregon. Less than two minutes into the second half, and the Bulldogs have lost ground. Down by 13. It's a nine-point game at halftime. And you know Oregon will try now to dictate the tempo and run their offense and put some touches on the ball and try to get it inside. And I'd be surprised if they didn't go right to Raymaker or Milling right around the basket and let them work. Raymaker kicks it out to Wilkins for three. And that's good. Well, you have to love the way Oregon is executing. They get it inside and they attack from in to out. They get the defense compacted around the big man. He pitches it out for a wide open three. Forty will drive a whistle for the shot. Now remember, though, there's still a long way to go in this game. And poise, very important now by Fresno State. Good move here by Forney. Almost traveled out there, put it on the ground, and did pick up the foul on Milling. If you can get Milling and Raymaker in a little foul trouble, obviously this is not the same basketball team when Milling is out of the game. If, if you can put some fouls on him and get him in jeopardy, then you're in pretty good shape. Forney looking for his 13th point of the game. Short, but it was South Smith gets the rebound. Trying to go back up with it. Forney didn't get it back in. Curry. And again, it was Wilkins who fed it. A dozen for Curry now. That's what we saw in the first half, Ralph. Transition defense. Not able to really retrace your steps to pick up the ball to get a man. And the Ducks are really, in a sense, beating Fresno State at their own game. They're beating him in that transition. Young with just his second basket of the game. It's a three-pointer, 45-31. The Ducks have come out here and opened the second half with a 12-3 blitz. Young makes it 12-6. Wilkins, in and out, rebound with Sam Smith. Roberson from behind the three-point line, and that's good. So back-to-back three-pointers for the Bulldogs. This is an explosive offensive team. The Bulldogs really need to explode now. And they have a very an outstanding three-point shooting team on the floor. You've got Roberson, Brooks, and Young. I mean, as you said, I mean, those guys uh, can certainly light it up when they get the opportunity. Nobody gets Lawrence, but he can't make it, and Milling can't get the follow with foul, though. going to be called on Kareem Stanley. Well, you see guards turning the corner and no one really stepping out to pick them up. And, and they're going to get Rassam Smith that time on the foul on the attempted dunk by Miller. Now they're going to say it was in the act of shooting or was it has to be in the act. Smith with his third foul will have to 
come out of the game. Damon Forney also heading to the Bulldog bench. Garrett Terdenga and Kareem Stanley in for Jerry Tarkanian's Bulldogs. Yeah, Forney just really isn't in, in, in basketball shape yet. I mean, he, he has not had that opportunity to practice a lot and, and, and play during games, and it, it's going to take him quite a while so before he can go out there and play a very solid 10, 12 minutes in a row without coming out. Milling makes them both. Back to a 13-point lead for the Ducks. Only oh. 16 minutes now remaining. Nine points for Millen. And Oregon changes the defense and uh, shows two free zones. So recognize what Fresno did and set your offense. Young for three, and that's good. His second consecutive three-pointer. Now it's a 10-point game. So maybe Dominic Young starting to heat it up. Now, I, I don't think the zone is something Jerry Green will stay in very long. I mean, you, when you have Robles and Brooks and Young out there looking to shoot three. Oh, lob inside. Tipped around, saved by Roberson to Brooks. Now it gets to Young. He's got Kareem Stanley. And then Young will fire a three. In and out, Stanley rebound, puts it back up and in. A nice job by Kareem Stanley. Eight-point game now. Well, his work ethic has improved dramatically. Kareem Stanley, very aggressive. And Fresno State, as you said, Ralph, with a, with a little mini run, forces Jerry Green to call a timeout. It's an 11-2 run for Jerry Tarkanian's Bulldogs, and now an eight-point game. 15-10 remaining. 47-39, Oregon. Now, one thing the dogs can do, they can definitely wear you down because they do have an outstanding bench. Monday night at 7, Jill's ready to throw the book at Tim when he ends up behind bars on home improvement, followed by more home improvement, only on your station, KMPH, Fox 26. So the Bulldogs are all of a sudden catching fire offensively. 11-2 run after, at one point, Bulldogs down by 17. Yeah, here's the opportunity jumper that did not go in, but, but look at the, the nice position that time by Kareem Stanley. He anticipated the ball would be missed, was very aggressive going to the glass, and able to finish it. Bulldogs were out rebounding in the first half of this game, as they have been in most of their games this season. Need to play defense, going inside, blocked by Stanley. See what he does with it. Gets it to Dominic Young. Watch out here. Brooks just lays it up and in. So now the Bulldogs are as close as they've been in a long, long time. It's a six-point game. On oh, credit Stanley again, the trigger man makes the nice block in the outlet pass, and here's the trap. Lawrence Curry. So Oregon breaks in, gets an easy two for Curry. He has 14. Uh, you know, both of these teams are very difficult to press. I mean, when you have outstanding guard play, they can make the extra pass and, and, and find the open player. So then with the left hand at the three, no good. Rebound comes off to Curry. Have to stop the ball here. Get up and, and didn't stop and let him go all the way in. Madden lays it up from Curry. Could have been uh, a call on Curry, who ran over Garrett Terdenga. Four points for Madden. Four straight points now for the Ducks. Bulldogs have pulled it within six. Inside, tipped off by Roberson to Brooks. A whistle inside and a foul. Looks like it'll be against Kyle Milling. Quite a play by Roberson to tip that ball. Yes, it was. I, I thought a very heads-up play by Roberson. It, it, it was really very court smart. When he's out there, he, he really has a good feel for the game and felt a little pressure coming his way. And a very nice touch pass. Second foul on Milling. Something you don't see very often. He, here's the lob inside. Roberson just, just felt he could not shoot it, so he, he tip passed it to Kendrick Brooks, who picked up the foul. Brooks will shoot two. Lawrence Curry and Wilkins going to the bench now for Oregon. Six points for Brooks in the game. And Brooks, of course, one of the more prolific shooters in the WAC and in the country. And he's a guy that, if he gets it going, I mean, he can make three or four in a row and really get you right back in the game. Trying to cut it to eight. In and out, rebound Millen. And wasn't Millen, was that Millen's third? If that was Milling's third foul, it was a second or third. Lindsay Hunter on the board is his second. But now the time for Fresno State to make a little move. With Curry, Lawrence, and Wilkins on the bench for Oregon. This is the time that, uh, that Fresno State was able to uh, make a little move in the first half. And now, uh, once it, when Wilkins went out. Madden unable to get down with the ball, so Fresno State coming down with a chance. Inside, not to wear a whistle. Going to be a reach around foul on Madden, I believe. Getting a piece of corny. Yeah, 
I like that pass inside to Forney. He establishes position. I, I like rewarding the big guys in there. Let them touch the ball. Let's execute our offense from in to out, but get the big guys involved. First down on Madden, 13-26 remaining in the game. It's 51-42, Oregon leading Fresno State. Of the Oregon player and then off of Dominic Young who's standing out of bounds. So Oregon gets the basketball. Ducks up by nine. And Dominic Evans looking to steal it. And he got it. Yeah, you, you knew all the way he was looking to get McShane and really got him from the backside. And that's going to force Jerry Green, I'm sure, to get Wilkins back in this game. Now McShane's got to be thinking about it because Young's right back up on it. And he turned it over. So McShane having problems, two turnovers in a row, and just like that. Wilkins, the rest is over. Off the bench and in the game. Now, you saw how devastating Dominic Young can be on defense uh, when he can utilize his quickness. Now, it hasn't happened against a terrific guard like uh, Kenya Wilkins, but Dominic has done a nice job. Fresno State with 12 turnovers, only seven for Oregon. So that's outstanding for the Ducks taking care of the ball. They're even in the second half, though, three apiece. This one inside, foul, going to be called on Oregon. They got Andre Larry, number four. That'll be his first personal. Yeah, Andre Larry, a young man from Bourbon Bay in Los Angeles, and uh, really Jerry Green and his staff thought he would be uh, could be quite a player. And here's a little bump on the drive by McCullough, the out of bounds to Fresno State. More substitutions for the Ducks. Three out, three in. Raymaker Curry coming in, along with Jamal Lawrence. <laughs> Jerry Green went right back to his starters in a hurry, didn't he? Ooh, they had or they had Kareem Stanley on a roll and they've got a mismatch. They've got, they've got a little guy Curry guarding Stanley, but nobody really has picked it up. Chris Heron in for Fresno State. Heron struggled in the first half. Trying to make something happen here, and that's a good idea. Get it to Dan Borney. Oh, Borney can finish. Nice play by Heron. Now it's a five point lead. Yeah, and I thought Heron, you know, who did not have a very good first half, or Dominic Young just got KO'd on that screen. Heron came right back, made a pretty good play. It's amazing Dominic McGinn's able to get up. Mm, and Wilkins comes back and puts a double hurt by hitting the three-pointer. Jerry, Jerry Tarkanian wants a 20-second timeout, and, and the first thing you have to do is you have to get up and play that big guy, and if he's going to set a screen, you have to communicate that to your guards, otherwise you won't have one. 14 points now for Wilkins, an eight-point lead. Monday night at 8, Jane's heart may break when she meets the mother she never knew. Donna Mills, guest stars on Melrose Place, followed by TV's all-time funniest holidays, only on your station, KMPH, Fox 26. 12-11 remaining in this game, and uh, at least Dan, the Bulldogs have made a game of it. At one point here in the second half, Fresno State trailed by 17 points. Now Bulldogs back in. Yeah, and, they, and they're back in because, uh, because really they kept their poise and they, they were able to run their offense and they've defended well. Cut it all the way to five. And they're also in because we played game in Corner. Yeah, well, I got Corner. Corner really has been a very pleasant uh, surprise and uh, to the bright spot so far for Fresno State. They're going to try to go right back to Corner. Why not? He kicks it out to Heron. This is McCullough. Nice finish to Corner. Put it up. Oh, get the roll. Yeah, no room. He's the third person. Boy, Forney, Forney, a magnificent inside score. I mean, when he receives the basketball, he certainly knows what to do with it. And again, they're looking for him, and I think this is very smart. See, this is unselfish by McCullough. Very sweet bounce pass. There's the foul, and then there's the completion of the play, getting the friendly roll and the goal. And again, now they can cut it all the way to five. Forney looking to complete a three-point play. He has 16 points in the game, make it 17. And he does get the three-point play. Bulldogs back to within five. Under 12 minutes remaining in the basketball game. Forney just adding to his career high. Going in his career high, 7.7 rebounds. Tonight, he has 17. Still some work to do for the Bulldogs, but the Fresno State basketball team's coming back. We'll be back after this. We want to keep the customer at the station as long as we can because we'll buy more stuff. Picture this. Oregon though with the basketball. Under 12 minutes remaining here in the game. <laughs> Whistle outside. Going to be a holding foul on Chris Heron. Heron getting a piece of Jamal Lawrence. Heron already becoming a crowd favorite here of the Oregon fans. Uh, all over him for everything he seems to do in this game. 
out of bounds, Oregon. And you know Oregon, every time they're in trouble, Ralph, they go right inside the milling. They try to find a way to get him the basketball because he's been very productive in the paint. Or it's been Kenya Wilkins with a penetration. And this is a big basket for the Ducks. I mean, it's a big stop for Fresno State if they can hold him here. Henry Madden drives, dishes. Where's the offensive foul on Madden? And that might have been the color. Uh, Darnell just hung in there that time, established good position. And that very second. This is a very smart defensive play. See if it was the color. Yes, it is. He went right in there and, and did a very nice job of uh, accepting that foul. And now the dogs with the ball. This is really a, the, the best opportunity in a long time. There's a whistle. He's now going to be called on Madden uh, on the defensive end, I believe. Well, oh, it's called on Curry inside. One and one situation for Fresno State. Tark is, uh, is getting ready for a frenetic finish. Second foul on Curry. Hey, remember, Ralph, in the first half, uh, Fresno State, Oregon had, had what, 16 fouls uh, with about uh, one or two minutes to go in the half. And that's a big miss. That, those are the time you have to put away, especially on the road. Boy, well, Heron really struggling as Wilkins does a nice job to step over Damon Forney. This is Lawrence. He has an open three-point shot and hits it. So that hurt Fresno State. Uh, really kind of a five-point turnaround. Heron had a one-on-one -on -one at the other end. Missed the first of two free throws. A three-pointer back at the other end for Oregon. Young for three. That's good. So Dominic Young heating up. I think that's his third three-pointer in the second half. It is. That was well executed by Fresno State. It's a lot different shooting that jumper when you have the room and you, you're doing it off the pattern than trying to come down and get it up one-on-one. -on -one. That was a nice job that time in the half court by, by the dogs. Lawrence. Kicks it out to Matt Wilkins. Inside for the slap and the whistle. Oh, you, you did definitely hear the slap. <laughs> well said. Second foul on Chris Heron. 15 foul on Fresno State. But Kenya Wilkins definitely finds the open player all the time. And there you saw Chris Heron with the reach and the foul. The out of bounds. And, and the one thing Chris was saying, well, at least I fouled him before he shot him. Stanley, Forney, and Dominic Young out into the game. Rasan Smith, Terdenga, and McCullough, along with Brooks and Heron. Big job now by Chris Heron to defend Kenya Wilkins. I mean, he, he's now at the point with Young out of the game. So this is a very big defensive effort that you're asking Chris Heron to do to get up on Wilkins. Three corner and good. Jamal Lawrence with the three. Uh, Jamal Lawrence is uh, 16 for the game, and he has made some critical three-point shots here in the second half. Heron still can't buy one. Now to Heron, it's really important not to overcommit against Wilson because he can penetrate right by you just like he did. Keaton dishes the Madden inside for the layup. Now, Kenya Wilkins is, is very similar to a brother Knight that plays at Stanford. And, and even like a Dominic Young, the great point guards, it's hard to come out and challenge them because they have that acceleration toward the goal. Just like that, it's a 10-point lead for Oregon, a 20-second timeout called by Jerry Tarkini. He wants to top it over before it gets out of hand. 9-19 remaining. It's 62-52. Time again for this week in Bulldog Sports. Brought to you, as always, by Glendale Federal Bank. Tomorrow, December 8th, Fresno State men's soccer team hosting Creighton in the quarterfinals of the NCAA Championships. One win away from a trip to the Final Four. Kick off at 2 o'clock at Bulldog Stadium. Next Sunday, the 15th, Fresno State wrestling team will host Portland. That match starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. This week in Bulldog Sports has been brought to you by Glendale Federal Bank. Dan looked like the Bulldogs uh, really positioned themselves to take this crowd out of it. They got everybody really quiet for a while. Made it a ball game, but they, now they've allowed the crowd back into it, and they've allowed Oregon to kind of dictate things. Well, we, we said at the top of the show, it, it's a 10-point advantage here for the Ducks playing before this packed arena. And, and it shows. I mean, they, they, they're making shots they probably would not make on the road. 
Jamal Lawrence with some big threes, Kenya Wilkins with some terrific decisions, and milling inside it has really been very tough for Fresno to handle. Here's the, here's the move on the out of bounds. Here's McCullough trying to put the ball on the ground, and there's the call. And they've been pretty consistent on that call. I will say Jamal Lawrence picks up the foul, but the referees have called it at both ends of the floor. Third foul on Lawrence. One and one situation for McCullough, the 18th foul for Oregon. McCullough converts. I think one of the keys earlier was when uh, Fresno State had Chris Heron at the free throw line with the one and one situation. He missed the front end. Oregon came back down and got a three pointer. And that, uh, that's what allowed the Ducks to start extending this lead back up to 10. McCullough hits them both. So it's back to an eight point spread. 40 back in the game. He's the leading scorer for Fresno State with 17. Gave Forney and Roberson a, a bit of a rest. Trying to get them uh, geared up uh, for the home stretch. And, and you know, you're down eight. And it's certainly not an insurmountable lead. I mean, the problem has been that Lawrence has really gotten off in the second half. And you're really going to have to start jumping out at him wherever he is because the Ducks are looking. See, they're looking for him. And he found it. And, and, and Lawrence, just, he just feels anything he puts up is going to go down. 19 points now for Jamal Lawrence. That leads all scores in the game. And it's at, up to an 11-point lead again for Oregon. The steal now is just Curry. And it's good enough. Team for Curry. 13 point lead now for Oregon. I don't think the fans get excited enough up here. Not out of bounds, turned over Fresno State. Yeah, that, that, that was a good call. It looked like it definitely went off of Dominic Young. And, and here's a situation where the dogs have lost their poise. And they're going to have to regroup. Just a, a very nice effort by Oregon. Here's Dominic Young on the break, and it looked like the ball definitely went off his hip. A good call by the official. Wilkins was there to slap it down off Young's hip, out of bounds, Oregon. And look at the turnover story here. Fresno State only averaged 13 turnovers a game in the first five, while Oregon was averaging 18. Now you're definitely in jeopardy, down 13 with eight to go. I mean, they did, all of a sudden you had it fairly close. It was down to five, and there's still time. But the really the disconcerting thing about it is, Ralph, that, that really Fresno State has not been able to stop Oregon in the half court. Here's Lawrence. Are you going to make another one? No, not a not that time, but Raymaker tips the ball out to Wilkins. Under eight minutes remaining now in the ball game. Lawrence will try again for three. So he's missed his last two rebound corny. Heron. Yeah, the fans are definitely on Chris Heron. Every time he touches the ball. Forney, the turn. Well, Forney count that one and he's fouled. Well, Forney just has a very sweet touch inside. He, he has nice moves with his back to the basket and has single-handedly really kept Fresno State within reach. A another beautiful play, a spin on the baseline, a and he's the kind of guy that when he feels the contact, he has that ability to get the ball in the air. And uh, Damon Fournier is uh, quite a player. He's going to the line for his 20th point. Boy, you're right. Where would Fresno State be without him in this ballgame? Of course, that seven-point average is a bit deceiving because Damon has been hurt. Uh, uh, most of the year with, with that drawing, and he really hasn't had a chance to play. Yeah, that was just in one game. 7.36 now remaining here in this one. Still a 10-point lead for Oregon. We'll be back. December 17th, the women's basketball team will host Michigan State in a 7 p.m. game at the North Gym on campus. For ticket information, call 278-DOGS. 7.36 remaining in the basketball game. It is a 10-point lead for Oregon. Bulldogs got it down to five at 57-52 with 10.56 remaining. But uh, over the last three and a half minutes, Bulldogs been outscored 10-5. Oregon basketball out of bounds. Wilkins will bring it up. Yeah, and he's a human press breaker. It's very, very difficult to double him up. Nice to have a uh, Kenya Wilkins or Dominic Young because it, it really takes uh, that full court pressure away. 
Derek Brown of the 14 being defended by Heron. Wilkins gets a screen. Will shoot the three and hit. Well, you know, you know exactly what Oregon will do with the lead in the second half. It's either going to be Milling inside or Wilkins or Lawrence on the perimeter, and they've really executed their offense beautifully. Heron nearly turned it over again. Heron will drive, take it up himself, and lay it in, and that's got to be good for that young man. Yeah, not nice to see Chris Heron get that field goal. V very nice move. His, his first two points of the game. Well, we all knew that this was going to be a learning experience for some of these guys playing the first first road game, and then, boy, getting an experience like this in this place. It's a baptism by fire, and the ball is right to you, Dan. Nice catch. Yeah, I made, I made a beautiful catch. Saved a turnover. Should have gone for the three-pointer while you were at it. Yeah. Fresno State. I'm always, I'm always ready to, to go for the three-pointer. You know that, don't you? <laughs> All right, Bulldog basketball. Down by 11. See if that the basket gives Heron a little confidence. Inside, the Smith tips it around, controlled by Roberson. Fans wanted a call there. Heron from way outside. Hits the three-pointer, and yes, I think it did do him some good to hit that layup. Yeah, that, that, well said because it, it, you could see Chris Heron's confidence level go way up when he made that 19 layup and now makes a pace. You, know, you think that Fresno State be down 15. You look at the scoreboard, it's an eight-point game. Three-pointer was far beyond the line, and he just pumped his fist when he made that shot to Chris Heron, but he's called for the foul at the other end. Third foul now on Heron. 16 foul on Fresno State. Well, Oregon trying to attack inside, and no surprise, ball going to Milling. And it looked like they're going to get Heron first on the foul. They'll be going out of bounds to to uh, to Oregon. And I'm sure Jerry Green has given instructions to his team. Let's maneuver the ball and try to go inside the Milling or try to get it outside the Kenya Wilkins. And the Milling, he rolls it in. That was a nice little shot by Kyle Milling. 11 points for him in the game. Aaron, in, and turns it over. Kind of a late whistle by uh, Ronnie Hernandez. I, I thought that was a very tough call on Aaron. It didn't look like to me that he shuffled his feet. I, I thought it was a solid move. But but the official was, uh, was pretty close. And they're going to say he shuffled it in. You look right here, uh, there might have been just a very slight move with the left foot. It's a very tough call. Nice back cut. Great Great pass in. No. It's a veteran Oregon team, Ralph. And, and when you extend your defense, they're smart enough to back cut to the goal. 13 for Milling. And uh, we've got an official stopping play. Technical foul is going to be called. Is it a double technical or just on order? Well, this is Milling with the dunk. And, and it may be it may be a technical foul on Milling for... He, he came out of there boisterous, yelling and screaming, and, and that may have been more the technical. We'll have to check it. Dominic Young shooting the free throws. Let's take another look. Uh, watch yeah. the demonstration by Milling. Yeah, watch yeah. Milling after he scores it. Well, I still think that's a, that's a tough one. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, if no. you're giving it to him, I think that's a pretty tough technical. Young makes them both. So, Bulldogs get two points and the basketball. Now a 10-point game. Five minutes, five seconds remaining in this one. Still enough time for Fresno State. Bulldogs have to get it going offensively and also have to stop Oregon. Cool down the Ducks at the defensive end. Well, I'll tell you, Chris Heron uh, will learn a lot from this game. Dominic Young slips, turn over to Wilkins. He lays it up and in. Hard to blame anybody on uh, that one. Dominic Young simply slips. 19 points for Wilkins. Corny loses it on the way up off his own knee. It'll be Oregon basketball out of bounds. And Things not going right here for the Bulldogs in clutch time. Yeah, and Forney saying that, that someone uh, deflected the ball, and I thought a pretty good pass inside. Well, it was deflected, 
by Milling. Still looked like it might have gone off Forney's knee. But it doesn't matter what it looked like no, to us. It doesn't it matter at all. Give it to Oregon. And here they go. They're going to spread the board. Look for Oregon to run its back up again because Fresno State will have to take some chances, come out and pressure, look for a steal. And the Ducks are going to open it up and try to attack. Lawrence screams, fires, and hits. Boy, Lawrence, Lawrence just looked like a first-team All-American in this game. 21 points now. Can't play any better than, than Lawrence has played. I mean, he's been absolutely superb. 14-point lead. Harris trying to cut it to 11. He's a three-pointer. No good rebound, Miller. Seven rebounds now for Miller. We go with 13 points. And Wilkins is just going to be a little general now and, and make some decisions. And they're going to take a 20. Oregon in great shape. They, they have played a tremendous basketball game. And I mean, if you look at the don't, I mean, the Ducks have been, have been as, uh, I mean, this is a, a terrific effort by Oregon. And if you're looking for some positive signs from Fresno State, Jerry Tarkanian, of course, is right now. The Bulldogs really have fought back uh, against some big odds and, and uh, come back from some big deficits in this game. Each night at uh, 10 o'clock on Fox 26, tune into the Valley's number one late-night newscast, KMPH 10 o'clock news, right here on KMPH Fox 26. Well, the thing you have to remember about Fresno State is this is a team that will gel and get better because it has so many new players, and they really have had that opportunity to work together. But I'm sure his Jerry and his staff will bring everyone together by the time the conference season uh, occurs. He saw the timeouts remaining. Jerry was telling me uh, just in this past week that he thought he may have had three days of practice with his full team so far when practice started in mid-October. Injuries, illness, academic problems. Uh, that really hurts because he put so much on the practice time. Lawrence for another three. I think he's missed out three straight. Brooks with the rebound. Three and a half minutes remaining. Young for three. No good, tipped around, Stanley tries to save it. Forney from behind, yeah, very ties nice, it up. Very nice effort by Forney. And one thing you notice about the young man is he's not afraid to get on the ground to go after the basketball. Possession arrow gives the ball to Oregon. But the Ducks are going to call a timeout. Watch Forney's hustle from behind. Yeah, Forney just stays after it. This is good uh, work ethic by Damon uh, Forney just to get after that one, get on the ground, and, and cause that uh, hell ball situation. It'll be Oregon ball out of bounds when we come back. 3.23 remaining. Ducks by 14. We've all got things. As the uh, Bulldogs applying pressure in the backcourt. And they might get a 10. And they did. They did get a 10. A, a nice effort. Or very difficult to do against a team uh, like the Ducks, especially when they have a Kenya Wilkins. And that was an outstanding effort that time by Fresno State. Forney did a great job uh, initially on the defense with uh, Raymaker, causing him some problems. Now, now you got to think threes if, if you're the dog. Look, look for Brooks to come off the screen or down that down. Wilkins right in his face, though. Heron driving, putting up the right hander. No good rebound, Milling. Eight boards now for him. Under three minutes remaining in the game. Now watch the screen. Now there's no screen. I thought they were going to try to set another screen on uh, Dominic Young. He's still seeing stars from the oh, last one he ran into. Well, here's a spread offense. There's a little bit of a delay. Run some clock. And... This is offensive foul. Lawrence out of the pass. Uh, Ralph, a good call, and, and this is something that uh, Lawrence, who's had a terrific shooting game, has to understand that you have to be under control. And, and again, a very nice effort inside to get position and, uh, and, and accept that foul. Tenth free throw is going to mean free throw time. Tenth foul on the uh, Oregon team will mean free throws for Fresno State, but uh, not before we take a timeout. 2.38 remaining, still 78-64 Oregon. 38 remaining now. Coming out of the timeout, 78 to 64, Fresno State trying to come back. Jerry Tarkanian says, I know we got a long way to go with this team, especially offensively, but uh, we got great play from the Bob Olson Travel Associates player of the game tonight, Damon Forney. Just the second game he has played for Fresno State. Uh, career high, 20 points. So our Bob Olson Travel Associates player of the game is Damon Forney. Brooks will uh, be at free throw line for Fresno State. 
We mentioned the 10th team foul on Oregon. Two shots for Brooks. He makes the first. You know, Fresno State will press now immediately. If Brooks can get this free throw down, it will give the dogs an opportunity to set their defense, look to double up in the backcourt. Didn't get it down, but oh, he might almost have a three-point play and a tip for him. He just couldn't get it down. Yeah, he was pointing again in there. Foul on the coach. Necessary foul. Seventh team foul, so it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Stops the clock, not much time elapsed. At least force Oregon to get to the line to make their throws. Lawrence is the guy who's going to the line. Second foul on McCullough. Lawrence, a perfect six for six from the line tonight. And 22 points. Jerry Green, if he wins this game, will even his record at Oregon at 59 and 59. Two and a half minutes remaining. And it's now a 15 point lead. A very impressive Oregon team. And they're going to be very difficult to beat uh, in the Pac-10 conference uh, at home. Uh, certainly be forming the team on the road, but it looks like they're one of the top four or five teams in the Pac-10. Group is good. And Group is higher than that. Group has been playing together really since last season. Uh, Fresno State will get much better. That foul's going to go against down the ground. So if you're looking at uh, how Oregon will fare in the conference, I mean, you've got to think Arizona's playing well. UCLA's not playing very well. Stanford, a very good team, but uh, Oregon to play with all of them. And there's, there's the bump. And, and that's been a, a, a very consistent call by the officials. They called all the hand checking and the, and the bumping uh, in this ball game. So when, you, when that uh, happens, the, the officials are right there to blow the whistle. Wilkins makes the free throw. 20 points now for the senior point guard. Tremendous production from the backcourt. We thought that was a key to the game for Fresno State at the top of the show. How will they handle the backcourt of Jamal Lawrence and Kenya Wilkins? Uh, certainly one of the better backcourts in the country, and they did. They have really stood up tall in this ballgame. They played exceptionally well. There's a nice play inside by McCullough. There's no state just hanging in there, trying to play as hard as they can. Raymaker. Managing to save it, and then getting it to Wilkins, who uh, goes to the Harlem Globetrotter. Uh, we, we just can't steal it from Wilkins. The only time that, that Oregon was in trouble was when Wilkins was out of the game. That, that was the time that Dominic Young was able to, to pick McShane for an easy score. Of course, there's no five-second count in this situation when you're dribbling the ball. And Dominic's saying, come on, we've got to come up and double him. We just can't let him keep dribbling here. Wilkins with 21 points in the game, turns it over that time. Heron has a breakaway. Lawrence defensively can't get to him. So Chris Heron lays it up and in. 21 points for Wilkins tonight, 23 for Lawrence. Heron now has seven. Yeah, that's a, that's a very productive backcourt. I mean, they get 44 out of the backcourt. Look out here as they break the press again. Millen slams it home. 15 for Kyle Millen. Well, you could say, too, that, Ralph, that the backcourt was tremendous for Oregon, but I, I think the play of Kyle Millen, you know, his ability to, to open it up inside really, really gave those outside shots uh, even a little more credence. I mean, Millen's the guy you had to guard. Heron not able to get the layup to drop, and then McCullough has to foul from behind his third. Raymaker to the line for a one-and-one. One. Now, there's not many teams in college basketball, if any, that will go undefeated. I can, I can tell you that. Well, so, this is a real learning experience for, uh, for Fresno State. And, you know, they just got to regroup. They play UMass. They've got Texas. They've got some very tough games away from Salon Arena. But, but as I said, I really think this team will come together. It'll get better and better as the year goes on, and, and I think it's definitely an NCAA tournament team. It works for three, a little long. Forney battles for the rebound and gets it. Nice move put on Wilkins. Can't get the shot to fall, though. Raymaker with the rebound. Wilkins runs by Young. And dishes. Look like Lawrence might have taken a step there as <laughs> right under the basket. Now, the other thing that uh, the Oregon fans and Jerry Green, the coaching staff, are saying, Ralph, is that this is a very pivotal game for them because they feel, let's say they don't have a great conference season, but they're over 500. Again, a win against a nationally ranked Fresno State team could propel them to the NCAA tournament. And our sub of the game, 
as he was our player of the game. Yeah, he was so good. We also made him our subway sub of the game, Damon Corning. Look at that shooting. 8 of 11, 4 of 6 from the free throw line. A career high 20 points for our subway sub of the game, Damon Corning. And Fresno State's only going to get better as uh, the Bulldogs are able to integrate him into the, the lineup. You know, he came off the bench tonight. Boy, he may be starting by uh, the UMass game on Tuesday. Well, I think you're going to see a lot of different starting lineups uh, this year. I, I don't think Jerry Tarkani will be set on, on a starting lineup. I, he's, he has uh, nine or ten players, and I, I think he can alternate and go with the guy that's hot and, and still get very good bench production. He's going to alternate the, uh, the guard rotation. Who will start there, for instance, giving Heron a chance to start at UMass because he's from Fall River, Massachusetts. And Dominic Young just fires up the three-pointer like, like it's nothing. 16 now for Young. Remember, he only had three in the first half. Boy, 20 tried to foul. Ends up getting a shot out of it and fouled himself. I think 20 actually tried to foul on the play. Ended up knocking the ball loose. But Dana 20 will go to the line and shoot two, trying to add to his career high of 20 points. Not only should Heron start at the UMass game, I believe Kendrick Brooks would start when the Bulldogs play LSU. Brooks, a New Orleans native. 21 points now for 40. As he throws up an air ball in the second one. Starting to tire. Uh, I, I think it's been a tre tremendous effort by Forney. He's got 21 points. He probably hasn't played much more than 25 minutes in this game. Young with the foul in the back here. That'll send Mike McShane to the line. Shooting two. Ten seconds remaining for Fresno State. Bulldogs play at UMass on Tuesday night. Then we'll travel to Austin, Texas to play the Longhorns next Saturday. First no State will be 5-1 and one after this game. And Dan, what will they do in the national rankings? Currently number well, it, 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 sure, it's going to drop. It's going to drop them a bit, but they'll stay in the they'll still stay in the top 25. And and I think you take into effect that you played a very good team on the road, and and you're going to play nationally ranked teams. And when you lose the teams that that uh, are, are very tough, it doesn't hurt you as much. Now, obviously, it would be nice for for Fresno State to come back. And, and be able to win either at UMass or at Texas, which I think will be will be exceedingly difficult. But but your team will grow, get better, and and hope they come out and, and keep their poise in, in that particular situation. Corny with another rebound as the final seconds tick down. Young threes blocked by McShane. Corny gets it. Rebound McCullough puts it up and in. So Darnell McKellar finishes it for Fresno State. Final points on the board put up by McKellar. But not enough for the Bulldogs. Time has expired here. Dark loses his first game of this season. A 12-point defeat to the Ducks. Final score, Oregon 87. Fresno State 75. Bulldogs really hurt by a 13-0 run in the first half and an 11-2 run in the second half. We'll be back to hear what Jerry Tarkanian has to say after this timeout. The clever idea people from Plymouth are at it again. Second half, but uh, I mean, they made every three. They played very, very well. It, 